It's been a fucking long week. Ugh. All right. Same as a promoter, I mean, how do you how do you feel about a moment like this? I mean, it's a it's a great story, as you said, a rematch would be huge, but obviously the super fights, as you say, go away. A lot of money they lost, a lot of money you probably lost. I mean, how do you feel with moments like this? I don't care about that. I, I don't I don't I don't care about the money side of the of the super fight. You know, um, the fighters do. I told John Jones, I said, you lost a zillion dollars tonight. Congratulations. Um, was he bombed? Did he oh, he's bombed. Yeah, he's bombed. Jones is bombed. Um, well, he was the link to both fights, you know. And uh, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. I mean, you never know what's going to happen if a guy can run undefeated his whole career and then retire. Or if, if tonight's going to happen, you know, you never know when that day is going to come. I, I, don't, I don't think about that stuff anymore. I don't get all, you know, like I know what's going to happen. Like in the old days, you know, because I knew, uh, you know, I knew Pedro Hizzo was going to win that fight and win the title and all this stuff. But I, I don't think like that anymore. The answer to your, to your Mexico City question, the answer is yes. It's not on the schedule because they're going closer, closer to the pay-per-view fight than going to Mexico City. So sorry, brother. What did he say? Oh. I have no idea. I don't know the answer to that question. I'm gonna be the most boring interview you've ever had tonight. I'm so so fried right now. Why are you fried? Just because the emotion. It's been a long week, man. It's been a long week. I, I finished filming tough Monday and Tuesday. We wrap there. Then I take the guys out, out and girls out after. Then um, then fight week kicks off and all the stuff that's going on. Um, you know, it's been a long week. Then the fight. And, so actually, I was. Uh, people were asking me on on Twitter about the tough. You know, we know some rumors of some people that are on it. But did you guys actually formally announce everybody that's on that cast? I don't think so. No. When would that happen? I don't know. <laughs> no idea. It's got it's got to be pretty soon because right. the thing airs September fourth, so it's got to be soon. Did you know him? Some of them. Yeah. I'd assume those ten are probably in. <laughs> I saw a lot of people saying that they felt like they sensed the kind of relief from Anderson almost. Like, now he's got this weight off his shoulders. Is somebody that's close to him, did, did you pick up on that at all? I would say that, that, that somewhere, somewhat that's probably true. And another side is like, you know? Nobody wants to lose, man. Nobody wants to lose. And he doesn't know how to lose. He doesn't remember how to lose. It's been too long since he's lost. This one's going to sink in a couple days after, you know? Like I said, the first thing I hear when we walk in is somebody thinks it's a fix and all the stupid shit that people are going to say, you know, will start to drive somebody crazy and, you know, he'll, uh, everybody knows. I know everybody knows he's going to want the rematch. Did you think he was clowning at first when he went down? I kind of was like, is this really happening? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because the way that he hit him with, with that last punch, you see his head snap. It's weird, man. You get that head to snap one certain way, and, and you go. And, he, and Weidman caught him perfectly where he needed to hit him to knock him out. Dude, I've been in this business for so long, and when you're the champion, the way everything is when you're champion and the way things are when you lose, how everything changes and how people change, it's pretty weird. It's a, it's a weird thing for these guys to deal with. And, uh, you know, Anderson plays a lot of things off publicly. The guy went on this win streak because he's an amazing competitor and he's an amazing <laughs> talent. He's going to want to redeem himself. You know what's interesting? If, if Anderson doesn't take the rematch, I know you're saying he rematch, let's say he moved up to 205. Leona 
Nishida had always said, I won't fight at 185 when Anderson is the champion. Lyoto can make 185. So in a way, if Anderson moves up or plays around and waits, doesn't that give us some more opportunities for some exciting fights at 185? I don't think there's any way in hell he moves to 205. He wouldn't do it when he was when he when he had the belt. You know, I think he's going to look at that tape, go back in again. The one thing that everybody said would be the end of this fight was Chris Weidman taking him to the ground once he got his hands. He did it immediately. Went after a ton of stuff. Hit Anderson with some big shots. Anderson got back up. You know, definitely got in his head in that first round, but then came out and just you know second round. Got caught, kept doing it, and got caught. Everybody, man. Roy Jones Jr., um, Tyson, Usher, Steven Seagal, the whole crew that was over there, they were like, they were all saying he could have finished that w that fight 25 different ways, and, you know, but he didn't. He, he played around and, and ended up getting caught. Dana, is part of what you're feeling right now anger? Yeah, I'm pissed. Anger? Do I look mad? No, I'm, I'm fucking exhausted, but uh, no, I'm not mad. What, what, what would I have to be mad about tonight? There could be a million reasons, two that come to mind. Stupid yeah. questions? Oh, uh, what? Two that come to mind. A, there were some big fights on the horizon. If you oh, I don't, I don't care about that stuff. That, that stuff doesn't bother me, you know? Um, I... Uh, Every night you go out there and these guys fight, anything could happen. The last fight we just did was Sonnen and, and that fight ends and goes into the next round. Jones loses, you know what I mean? Obviously, it's not like getting knocked out the way Anderson did, but still, anything can happen when you go out there and fight. And I, I gave that shit up a long time ago. That's why when people ask me, seriously, who's gonna win? Like, people will come up in the street and ask me, like, I know the answer, like, I'm, I know who's gonna win or something. No idea who's gonna win. And, and, Whoever wins, wins, and whatever happens, happens, and we just, we roll with it. I couldn't help but notice you talking to Roy for a very long time backstage. Yeah. That's another Jones that's pretty bummed out. Yeah, well, what was he saying to you? So, so Roy Jones Jr., right? So, Anderson has been talking about boxing him forever, you know? And I called Roy on Tuesday and I said, you know Anderson Silva's been talking about boxing you and other I said, are you interested in this? He said, yes, I am. And uh, and I said, are you free and clear to talk to me? You're not under contract with any other promoter. And he goes, don't worry about what I'm doing. You and I go way back. He says, I'll be there Saturday, and we'll figure this thing out. So he flew out here tonight, you know, and, and I was just kind of, I like to talk about the ideas of, of, of things, and we were going to talk after tonight. And after that first round, after the first round, I don't know if you guys saw Roy Jones jump up and start screaming at me, but Roy Jones jumped up and started running over. He said, he's done, he's done, he's in his head, this fight's over already, this fight's over right now in this round, meaning Silva was gonna beat him. And uh, yeah, and then, and then uh, halfway through that round, that whole fucking side of the arena was like, holy shit, you know, and, and Usher, is, Usher trains with Anderson, and so it's a crazy night. So is that talk gone then? I mean, does it, does it Oh no, Roy's still saying, listen, let me tell you what we can do. <laughs> well, what about from your point of view? I mean, in some ways, with Anderson not being the champ, it seems like it'd almost be easier to make the fight now. Are you Roy Jones Jr.? <laughs> is that what he was saying? He was saying all kinds of shit to me, yeah. He wants that fight. You're not interested. Oh no, it's not that. I'm, what did you say back then? Like, to even fight. today, if Anderson yeah. came back out in that second round and knocked him out, I still don't know what the answer was. I brought him out here to talk. You know, for, before you can even a, a crazy fight like that, like a boxing match between between two guys, you got to sit down. You got to find out what expectations are. What are your expectations? What what what, what do you want to get out of this thing? What do you think? I want seven million dollars. Roy, thanks for flying out here. It was nice talking to you. I love you. Have a good day. You know, you got to find out what everybody's expectations are. What everybody, you know. What Anderson wants, what Roy wants, is this really going to be boxing? Is this? Just wanted to sit down face to face and talk. And me and Roy Jones do go way back, like years, like when I was in my early twenties. And so, would that be a UFC promotion, though, or would that be in conjunction with a boxing promoter? How would that work? No, Roy is his own promoter, yeah, as far as I know. Right. And that's we're going to talk about that too. I said, "Are you free and clear?" He said, "You and me go way back. Don't worry about what I'm doing. We'll, we'll, we'll come out and we'll figure this thing out." 
I guess so. the bottom line of what we're trying to find out is does the result tonight change anything in that possibility, whether it be positive or negative? Because Anderson lost tonight, does your position on that possibility change at Anderson all? Anderson still needs to go home, hang out with his family, you know, take a week or two to shake this thing off, you know. I mean, there's times, like, when guys will win a fight and they don't want to talk for three weeks. You know what I mean? It's, it's really part of the process. It really is. And especially a big night like tonight, and when you lose the way that he lost, and there's a process for this. So I had Royal over me. I had, you know, everybody was talking to me. I said, we just got to wait for Anderson to ride this out. Now, you mentioned in the press conference a little bit about Chris Lee, but earlier in the week, it almost sounded like, you know, you keeping him in the organization almost keeps him alive, keeps him on the right path, keeps him, keeps him on the straight and yeah. narrow as well as he can. So, what, but on what the flip side, yeah. on the flip side, you know, his fight style is not healthy for him either. You know what I mean? The way that he fights and, and, you know, he's getting up there in age and the big layoffs don't help him either. You know, I, 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 I don't know. I got to figure that one out too. I got to figure out what I think is going to be best for him, which people hate when I say that and when I do that, but, you know. Well, but it kind of comes back around to what you and I were talking about the other day with Mark Williams and the mental health aspect of the game. There's a way that you know people can get prepared for this. Situation. Well, Chris Lieben's issues are different than Mark Munoz's. You know what I mean? Um, I, I want I want Lieben to get up every day and be a part of society and, and have to have to do something. Whether it's training, whether it's this, whether it's training other people. No matter what it is, I want Chris Lieben because Chris Lieben Chris Lieben has the type of personality that can go off the deep end very easily. You know, in a lot of negative ways. And uh, I really care about the kid. I like him a lot. I love the kid. And uh, I, I just, I got to figure this thing out. No. I need to check in on him, too. Yes. I know. It's crazy, man. It's getting crazy. And nobody's more bothered by that than Dominic. I yeah, I know. He's freaking out. It's going to have to be soon. Dan, it's going to have to be soon. It's getting crazy. We heard from you as, as, as the point man you know, for the organization and so forth, but you said uh, earlier in the week that you, you were a big fan of Anderson's. And as a fan, if you can speak as a fan, it is still – how does it sit with you, though, though the way he lost? It, it has to be – Kind of de it has to be depressing the way the way he lost that fight. At least that's the way it seems to me. Yeah, no, it's not to me though. I mean, he went out there and uh, he, he fought the way that he fought. He did what he did. You know, again, I said if if he's doing all this stuff and then ends up clipping him and knocking him out, you're just like, holy shit, this guy's a genius. He defended the ground, pulled Weidman out of his game, and then ended up knocking Weidman out or whatever. It's just that that's the way he chose to fight tonight. Do I think he will do it in the rematch? There's no way in hell. I think you're going to see a much more serious Anderson Silva. Um, I think it's going to be a completely different fight. And I think it'll be a fight that, you know, I, I know it seemed like I was attacking Kevin Ioli earlier, but I wasn't. You know, I wasn't attacking Kevin. I was, I was just saying, you know, people are going to say, oh, did that fight suck? Did you get what you paid for? Yeah, you fucking got what you paid for. The greatest fighter of all time went out there against Chris Weidman, a guy that many people... I saw so much shit about this fight. Like, I literally... I'm not kidding you. I had... Uh, um, you guys know who Norton is, right? You know Jim Norton? The comedian and huge UFC fan, radio personality. So he comes back in my room tonight and... He says, uh, you know, it's almost like, and I saw a ton of this shit on the internet, like, we were getting the fighters to say that we were, like, playing up this whole thing on how fighters were saying this guy could beat Anderson Silva. And I said, are you fucking crazy? First of all, if I say, if I tell a fighter one thing that a fighter doesn't want to do, he's out there ripping us apart anyway, saying, oh, they, they fucking made me say that. Are you kidding me? If I went to these guys and said, listen, we got to build this fight up, okay? we got to make it look like Chris Weidman might have a chance to win this fight. So I need you guys to do an interview. First of all, half of them wouldn't fucking do it, okay? 
Second of all, if I could talk some of it into it, the first thing they'd fucking say when they, when they were pissed at me is like, you know what he fucking did? He made us go out and say that we thought Chris Weidman was going to win. In a heartbeat. Every fucking one of them would tell you guys that that's what I did to him. You, you know this is true. And I said, are you crazy, man? I said, of course. These guys think it's true. It's real. And then, you know, I saw all this stuff on the internet. They're selling wolf tickets by saying Chris Weidman can win this fight. And it's fucking crazy, man. We don't tell anybody to do anything. You know what I tell you to do? You got to fucking do PR on Tuesday. You got to go over here and do fucking radio on Thursday. You got to do this. You know, we got to sign this fight. You got to sign your contract. Don't swear on free TV. Uh, you know, all this shit I do tell them to do. Uh, that's not one of them. We don't tell guys what to say or we don't tell guys to try to. And this is the other thing I don't do. I'll never call a guy and go, listen, you got to start talking some shit, okay? Because we got to get this fight. Listen, there's going to be fights where guys talk shit. There's going to be guys, fights when guys start hugging and loving each other. Do I love that? No, but it is what it is. You know, I don't ever. It's like when Ariel says, are you mad? You seem mad because I'm not mad. You know, a super fight was always hypothetical. It was always if everything lines up, the super fight would happen. If the super fight happened, it would have been fucking amazing. Imagine John Jones and Anderson walking in, you know, two undefeated fighters from two different weight classes. You know, now the pressure isn't on me anymore. I don't have to make that fucking fight. I talked all this shit about boxing, and then if I didn't pull that one off, holy shit. You know, um, but I just don't think like that anymore. Question about Chris Weidman. You know, the guy looks like Clark Kent. He's all American, clean cut. From the New York, New Jersey area, is there any way you could use somebody like him to help get MMA legalized in New York? Listen, there's only one thing that's going to get MMA legalized in New York. When the most corrupt politician I've ever seen in my life goes away. Ooh, that's going to be a bad one. I said it. <laughs> Listen to Ariel. Are you talking about Shelly Silver? Oh, no. <laughs> I, I want you to say it. I say the name. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Touche. <laughs> Rematch Madison Square Garden. How fast can we turn this around? How about Super Bowl Saturday in New Jersey where Fox has a Super Bowl? Just thinking off the top of my head here. We're talking about super fights. Is there a Not anymore. No? <laughs> <laughs> I will never hear that fucking word again, or at least for is a there, while. Is there a possibility that Weidman Silva 2 is bigger than any possible super fight? I mean, the greatest oh, champion yeah. we've ever had. Yeah. Just well, that's a good question. That's a good question. His question is... Lose one. Did everybody hear that? His question is, the super fight talk that we were talking about, Silva Weidman 2 might be bigger than that super fight that we were talking about. Silva Weidman 2 is fucking massive. It's huge, and it's not just huge here, it's huge all over the world. I mean, think about it, Brazil, the United States, Canada, the UK, Australia, you know, all the places that, that, that you know, we do big numbers, all the places that are big, it's a massive fight. But, on the flip side, John Jones, Anderson Silva was a massive, massive fight too. I don't know. They're probably, I don't know. You know what I hope the answer to that question is? Fuck yes, I hope it's that big. I hope it's true. Daniel, the Super Bowl weekend card, would that be a pay-per-view or would that be a Fox card? No, it would be a pay-per-view. And is, uh, is New York booked for that weekend? They announced it the other day. Pro the Fox Sports 1 launch after Jay Glazer. They ran a video that said the Prudential Center is booked for the Saturday Night Bulls. Can you say off the top of your head? I missed that area. Well, I wanted you to say it. Oh, he's At the Jay Glazer Q&A that nobody else went to that I sat there for You were the only... <laughs> wow. 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 You, were, you were the guy that showed up at the Gla Jay Glazer Q&A? Dedication. Dana, you paid off, damn it. Yeah. The best idea possible for it, do you think that makes the most sense? What? That fight? Would that be, like, people say Brazil? Well, you're off the top of my head. Yeah, that makes sense. No, but the, is there, like, an underlying... To that, or is it really just off the top of your head? No, it's really off the top of my head. And do you have any idea how the pay-per-view is trending? Tonight? Big. Big? Big. What kind of big? 
Yesterday, this thing was trending over 800,000 buys. What do you think it will get? I hope it does 1.8 million. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. We were trending over 800,000 yesterday. So. And did you get the impression that this will be covered by mainstream sports media? Oh, hell yeah. Video? Hell yeah. Yeah, it will be. Do you think they understand the magnitude of this? Yeah, I get it. Believe me, I, I understand how big this is that he knocked him out tonight. It's huge. Of course you do, but people who don't usually cover the UFC on Monday, do you think they'll be talking about this? I can tell you how many requests he's got. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, looking yeah. at somebody uh, um, from the prelims, Edson Barboza, with those legs, I, I awesome. have a feeling that you were given a, a couple of oh. Yeah, moments, oh right? shit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, he's a fun kid to watch. He keeps getting better and better. Yeah, it's good stuff. It was a great card tonight, yeah. from from the first fight to the last fight. You know, um, it, it, it was a great fight. And, and you know, there's been all this talk about ah, fuck it, I'm not even gonna go there. Did somebody else have a question over here? I'm too tired to talk about that right now. Wasn't anywhere near as big as it would have been if those two fought in their no, prime. But it was still one of the better fights of the year. Right. And a pretty memorable moment. No, it yeah. Quite what it could right. Imagine those two in their prime. Sure. Killers. Yeah, banging it out. The whole world wants to know who's the best. They weren't even the best at the time when they fought. No, two guys. Not. Who's better? Pride or UFC? And I was willing to fucking see. That's the thing. I was willing to put that fight on. When we had competing organization, I was going to go head to head against our competing organization and make that fight. And they lied, just like every other time they lied and said they were going to do something and didn't do it. You know, we got robbed of that one. Hey, Dana, I heard some people griping that you know the pay reports came out. I know you don't want to talk about fighter pay too much, but about Weidman's pay for this fight. But I had heard that he was offered a deal before this fight and said, no, I want to wait until after this fight so that I have a little more negotiating power because you guys are going to pay me more. Is that? It's not true. Not true? It's not true at all. Actually, if you heard tonight, he said, I've been through a lot of hard times in the last year and, and the UFC really helped me out. What? <laughs> fucking UFC help somebody? I don't believe it. We don't help people. We fucking steal from people and we rob and pillage and... He actually brings up the point about Roy Nelson, though. You know, he gambled and lost on that, not renewing before his, his fight. Where, where, Wy Weidman didn't gamble. Weidman's been, you know, a great guy. Weidman, you know, there were never any talks like that. And and th there's never any talks like that. I mean, even with Roy Nelson, as, as we get into it, you know, th that's that's even, there's more, more to the Roy Nelson story. But, again, without rehashing that whole thing, there, there's never, when we go into, into contract negotiations, you know, a lot of this stuff is bullshit. And I told Tim Kennedy was sitting right here. You know, and I fucking called him out in the fighter meeting. You want to make more money? Go out there and be fucking exciting. Make people talk about you Sunday and Monday. Go out and put on the fucking show of your life. When people are doing the fucking wave during your fight, eh, they might not be too fucking excited about your fight, okay? You don't ever want people doing the fucking wave while you're fighting, right? Yeah. Fun at baseball games, not <laughs> fucking fun at a fight. Can yeah. we talk a little bit more about Vitor that was 172 texts on your phone? I mean, he, yeah. he, you know, he's being very vocal. I know you appreciate when people ask yeah. for something. But where does he really stand in this? Obviously, you're, you're pushing for the rematch. But where does Vitor fit in the picture? Um, Anderson Silva has gone undefeated since 2006 and has beat everybody and held the title. He deserves the rematch. I mean, Chris Weidman said that before he even fought him. You know, um, Vitor's just going to have to wait. He, he's not getting the rematch. He can text, he can tweet, he can write fucking letters, he can call his congressman, he can do whatever he wants to do. He's going to have to wait. Anderson Silva's getting the rematch. And then, <laughs> who do you think would be the underdog in the rematch? Well, the odds were, were, were the lowest they've ever been for an Anderson Silva fight. The next ones are going to be very interesting. I guarantee you. You go online right now, I bet you the odds are up already for the next, for the rematch. What's your underdog for the rematch? 
I, I, I think I would have the odds pretty much the same as they were this time. They were like two to one. Anderson Silva. Dana, who do you still favor Silva? Yeah, I think it would still be the same. Dave? I think so too. Hmm? Yeah, two to one. I think it would be a two to one again. Dana, for many years you uh, fought with many people that Anderson was the best pound for pound fighter in the world. Yep. Obviously, that's not the case. You being one of them. Yeah. Who is the best pound for pound fighter in the world now? John Jones. Not Weidman. No. You beat the king. So if you beat that guy, you automatically become the pound for pound best in the world. There's no, there's no rule book for the pound for pound discussion. I was just wondering. You don't think it's enough? Is he above GSP? No. no you're talking about guys who held belts and fought for years. He's got. He doesn't have one title defense. Yet he's the pound for pound best in the world. All of a sudden, doesn't work that way. There might not be any rules, but you can't be fucking stupid either. Is he top five? Yeah. And I'll, you think of my top five now? I don't know not if I didn't. Five. You got Jose Aldo in there too. He, yeah, so, so he just jumps right above Jose Aldo, who's defended the title and done all this other stuff. You don't just shoot right to the top of the pound-for-pound pound list. Pound-for-pound pound pound list is the... Yeah, he'd be in the top ten, definitely. At the bottom. Yeah, probably. Because I don't know who else is in it. Because some of, when you get past fucking four and five, I, I disagree with most of it. I don't agree with, with the top ten pound-for-pound. Pound. I, I, agree with, I agree with, like, the top four. Because you'll have people who have, usually it's Anderson, then you got Jones or St. Pierre, Jose Aldo's in there. I agree with all of those. And once you get past there, it's all sketchy. It's all questionable after that. And do you think that Anderson is number two or number three? Hold on, baby. What's, what's that? Do you think that Anderson is number two? Yeah, Anderson's definitely still on the list. He's two, he's three, he's, I don't know. He's above Weidman. But he's above Weidman. Oh, yeah. I'd still put him above Weidman. Really? Yeah. And above Wade or above above Saint Pierre? Above, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where where he'd fall. You, you don't think he's still one of the pound for pound best fighters in the world? We need you to write a full list right now. Nine, <laughs> not, not, Ninety percent of the people in here believe that he lost because he was fucking around, right? Many people think he lost tonight because he was fucking around and doing what he shouldn't have been doing. Just like in college football, the number one team loses to the number 25 team, the number 25 team doesn't go to number one. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Would you pull him aside and have a, have, a, have a talking with him? What'd you ask me? Massive. Maybe the biggest. I mean, it's... That one was big. That one was big. I'd still make Matt Sarah number one. Yeah, that was craziness. No, nobody saw that coming except Matt Sarah. People actually thought Weidman would win. If you, Matt Sarah, Matt Sarah's mom didn't think he was going to win that fight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she had money on GSP. <laughs> yes. Yes, it will be loaded. Were there two questions there? Was it, will it be loaded or will the card suck? Is that what you asked? <laughs> what did you say? No, I, I mean, it better be something special. It's our 20 year anniversary. So we will do the best we can, you know, injuries willing, you know, as long as people aren't fucking dropping like flies, we'll, we'll build a great card. I can tell you this right now. <clears throat> this is one of those fights that when you talk about what's the significance of this. Did you look around that arena tonight when he fucking lost? I mean, the whole fucking place was like going, holy shit, people were popping and cheering. I got a buddy from Boston who's down in Huntington Beach right now. He said the fucking streets were loaded with fucking people out in the streets just screaming and yelling and going fucking crazy. Imagine what it was like in Brazil. What it was like in Brazil when this dude lost. This is one of those moments where People would fucking just go crazy. Anderson Silva lost tonight. That's that's one of those crazy moments, you know. Um, and we were talking earlier this week about when this guy retires, man. When this guy retires and, and the significance of his his place in the sport and what he does. 
nights like tonight that you realize it, you know, and everybody was in shock and people were, were going crazy and, you know, people were out in the streets. This dude was in Huntington. He said, you should have fucking saw it down here. You know, that whole restaurant district down there.